Blake's here. All right. We're just going to get started, and if someone joins us late, that's okay. They can always watch the recording if they need to, because we're definitely missing some people. Hannah, are Hannah and Isabella getting on our meet? Aren't they in class with you right now? Are they not here today? Dang. Okay. I guess we're down a few people. All right, well, I'm going to get started. Well, we're going to get started. Avery left. I wonder if it kicked her off. We are on page 28. Remember, they just we just were talking about Flash Stanley. Page 28. Oh, Avery, you're back. I'm glad. Okay, page 28 is where we're at, Avery. When Mom wasn't taking pictures, Flat Stanley was taped to the front of our air conditioning vent. All I can say is he's having a lot better ride than I was. The windows in the back of the van didn't open, and the vents were all blocked by our luggage. I wasn't getting any cold air. What made me even more uncomfortable was the fact that Mom was in control of the trip. She always tries to make things about education, and I knew she was going to turn this experience into a one long lesson. She's been doing that ever since I was little. I remember when I got scratched by Grandma's cat, and she tried to turn it into a teaching moment. Sure enough, half hour into the trip today, she tar she started in with the educational stuff. She had borrowed a bunch of CDs from the library that teach Spanish and said we, we'd use the long stretch on the road to learn a new language as a family. Hola. Learn to speak Spanish fluently. Mom's always saying that learning a foreign language is the best thing you can do for your brain. That might be true, but I think she should leave the actual teaching to the schools. Mom decided it would be a good idea to expose me to a foreign language early on. So when I was in first grade, she would have put on Spanish-speaking channels on TV while I ate breakfast. Mom would repeat whatever they said on television. But when she said the words, they came out a little bit different. Tango hambres. Tango hamburgers. I ended up learning all sorts of phrases that weren't right. For example, the way you're supposed to say, what's your name in Spanish is como te llamas. Well, I know that now because I learned it in middle school Spanish class. But when I was little, mom taught me that what's your name in Spanish was te amo, which actually means I love you. I just wish I had known that before I ran into a million different people. Te amo, te amo. So he's just running around telling people he loves them. Today, mom played the first two Spanish CDs, but she got frustrated that no one seemed to be paying attention. So she switched gears and said we were going to play a car game she read about in her magazine. All right, so there's her lovely magazine thing again. The game was called Alphabet Groceries, and you play it like this. The first player has to name an item you get from the grocery store that starts with the letter A. The next person has to come up with an item that starts with B, and so on. If a player can't come up with an item that starts with their letter, they're out of the game. All right. We're going to try to do this game really quickly so mrs kniffle is going to start and then i'm going to say one of your names and in the chat you're going to type some type of food you get from the grocery store okay so i'm going to say apple hannah d what starts with a b isaac we're on page 32. what starts with the b hannah or you can unmute yourself and just say it because it's just one word. Okay, Hannah, you're officially out because you were not paying attention to the game. I love B. You have to unmute yourself to say it or you can type it in the chat. Quick, 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 
I can think of like six things. You can do it. What do you get from the grocery store that starts with a C? Cheese, yep, or like Coke or um, cans. Um, Mackenzie, D. You can do it. Let's go, Mackenzie. You can do it. Dragon fruit. Okay. Um, Avery. E. What do you get from the store that starts with an E? Oh, she left our meeting. Oh, wait, no, you're back. Okay. You can unmute yourself or type it in the chat. Remember, the goal is to go quick. All right. This is going slower than I intended. Molly, why are you on twice? All right, we're going to switch up the game because it's taking too long one person at a time. So now we're just going to try to get through something. So I'm going to say the letter and you're going to just type it in the thing. So everyone, we are on E. What is something you get from the store that starts with an E? Mrs. Kneifel's answer's in. Oh, got another one. Looks like we're all thinking eggs. We're playing a game right now, Isabella. We're naming things from the grocery store that starts with a certain letter because that's what they're doing in Diary of Wimpy Kids. You can't get elephant ears from the store, silly. At least I don't think so. All right, we're going to move on to F. Fish, fruit, fries. Um, what else can you get from the store that starts with an F? Fettuccine. I don't know how to spell fettuccine, but fried pickles don't come from the store, Zachary. Just pickles. Fritos. That's a good one. All right, we're going to move on to G. Yogurt. Grapes. Glade, you know, like the plugins. You cannot get, well, you can get grass seed from a store, Isaac, but you can't just buy grass. Next is H. Hot Pockets. Hot Chips. Hot fries. Those are a thing, right? You don't buy houses from a store. Logan. Hot Cheetos. Hot Cheetos. Hamburger. That's a good one. Hot chocolate. Hot dog. Hershey. All right, next is I. Ice cream, I win. Uh -huh. Ice cream, I don't really know what else starts with an I. Ice, oh yeah, you can always buy ice from a store. What else starts with an I? I's a hard one. All right, let's move on to J. Jelly, of course. Jam. Insurance, yeah. Jello. Jam. Juice. All 
All right, we're moving on to K. You can buy a kite at a store. Ketchup. Ooh, that's a good one. A kettle. Yep. A kitty. A pet store. Yeah. Um. Kool Aid. Kit Kat. Ooh, you guys are thinking some good ones. Next is L. Lamp. Lemonade. How about you can just buy lemons or laundry basket. Good. Lunchables. Lard. Yeah, you cook with lard. It's like you get it in a can and you cook with it. Some people do. Lawnmower. Let's move on to M. M. Milk. You can't buy money at a store. Go to a bank. Mac and cheese. Microwaves. Milk. buy movies from a store you can't buy a moose from a store gauge yeah goofball unless it's a stuffed animal moose movies how about n noodles What starts with N? Nachos, noodles. Oh, mustard, that's a good one. For the last one, notebooks, nacho cheese. O. What can you... Nuggets. Yeah, like chicken nuggets. What's an O? What can you buy for an O? Olives. Oranges. You guys are so smart. Mrs. Kneifel hates olives, and I don't eat oranges either. Orange juice. I'm sure at, like, a fish market, you could buy octopus to eat, you know? A specialty shop, you could probably buy octopus. Not at Walmart, but a right, uh, fish specialty store. All right, P. Pickles. You have to buy the pickles in the juice. Pineapple, pancakes, peanuts, powder, like baby powder. Pringles. Gosh, you guys are so good. All right. We should probably call it a day, even though I'm enjoying this, but we only have like 10 minutes left. Pans, that's a good one. So, okay, we're going to get back to our story. Good job, guys. Way to get your minds thinking. We're on page 32. Good job. So next time you're in the car and you're really, really bored, you could do this back and forth. Like I say A, you say B, C, you know what I mean? It's just kind of hard when we, it's better when we were all doing it once. Takis or tea? We weren't on tea yet, Isaac. Mom said I should go first, so I said Apple, which I guess was kind of an obvious choice. Roderick was up next, but he but he, he said he couldn't come up with any food that starts with B. Pretty sure he was lying to having to get out of the game, but with Roderick, you never know. When Roderick got knocked out, the turn went to Manny, who came up with his word right away, Apple. 
Mom started clapping, but I pointed out Bapple isn't a real word. She said Manny is just learning the alphabet, and we need, we need to encourage him. I quit in protest, and from then on, it was only Manny, Mom, and Dad playing. I really wished my earplugs weren't buried in my duffel bag under a pile of suitcases, because the next hour and a half were pretty painful. Zapple. So basically, he's adding the first letter onto every single thing and just, you know, making apple and turning it to with all that different letters. All that talk about food was actually getting me kind of hungry. And when I saw a sign for a drive through place at the next exit, I asked mom if we could pull over. But mom said we wouldn't be stopping at any of those kinds of restaurants because they don't serve real food. She said fast food places lure kids in with cheap plastic toys to trick them into eating sugar and fat. And we weren't going to fall into that trap. Mom said she had much better alternative and handed me a lunch bag with my name on it. Gregory. Mommy meal. Nutritious food. Fun activities. So, it's a silly bag. Mom said she got the mommy meal idea from Family Frolic, which I guess should not have been, should not have come to as a surprise. Inside the bag was a tuna fish sandwich, an orange, and a little carton of milk, plus something wrapped in tinfoil. Mom said I had to eat my fruit before I could unwrap the tinfoil because that was my prize. But I wish I had just opened it right away because I wouldn't have eaten the whole orange if I had known the prize was a pack of math flashcards. Roderick got flashcards in his lunch too, and before we could both see where this was headed, and we could both see where this was headed. So before Mom could turn the next hour of the trip into a tutoring session, I pulled out one of the games Mom had packed in a big tote bag. I'm pretty sure getting flashcards in your lunch is not the best surprise ever. I'm just saying. The game I grabbed was called I Must Confess, and when Mom saw it, she got excited. She forgot all about the flashcards. I read the rules, which were pretty simple. One person takes a card from the deck and reads it out loud to everyone else. I must confess, I've met a famous person. If one of the players have done a thing that's written on the card, they earn a point, and the first player to get to 10 points wins. I was a little skeptical at first, but I have to admit, the game was actually kind of fun. I learned a lot of things about mom and dad I never knew before. I found out that dad had met pet had a pet chameleon when he was a kid, and mom dyed her hair blonde once, which really surprised me. Believe it or not, even Patrick was getting into the game. He got a point for being the only person who had spent out overnight, who'd ever slept out overnight for tickets to a concert, and another point for getting a bug stuck in his ear, which I remember like it was yesterday. Dad and Roderick were neck and neck with nine points, and whoever scored next would win the game. Mom seemed totally happy. Everyone was getting along and having fun. Then she pulled a new card out of the deck and read it. I must confess, I've toilet papered a neighbor's house. I'm pretty sure Mom thought no one was going to get a point on that card because she was already reaching for the next one, but Roderick started like acting like he had just won the lottery. I win, I win. Mom thought Roderick was lying to get the point, but he told her it was true. He said that a few months ago, he and his bandmates toilet papered Mrs. Turtle's house next door after she called the police to complain. They were making too much noise rehearsing. Roderick thought the whole thing was pretty funny, but Mom didn't seem amused. Let me get this straight. You and two of your bandmates toilet papered an elderly woman's house? If I was Roderick, I would have changed my story real quick and said I was just joking around to win the game. But Roderick didn't realize, didn't, blah, blah. but Roderick didn't seize his chance to bail out. No, there were four of us. Mom had dad pull over to the side of the road, then handed Roderick her phone and made him call Mrs. Turtle to apologize, which was awkward for everyone in the car. I'm sorry for toilet paper in your house. Mama. Ma'am. After that, it was quiet in the van for a long time. Mom was about to pop the next Spanish CD in the stereo, but luckily Manny had fallen asleep by then, so she couldn't. If you wake up Manny in the middle of one of his naps, he'll go completely ballistic, and there's no calming him down. So wherever Manny falls asleep, Mom and Dad do everything I can to keep him that way. Has anyone seen my shh? I was big on naps when I was Manny's age, too. I used to take an hour-long nap after lunch every day, and when I started preschool, we had an official nap time where everyone pulled out a mat and slept on the floor. If you ask me, I think we should give kids nap time all the way through college, but they stopped doing it after preschool, which I found out the hard way. On the first day of kindergarten, after we had our snack, I asked the teacher where the mats were so I could lie down and recharge my batteries. But she said kindergartners don't have nap time. And I thought she was just making a funny joke. Yeah, right. 
I'm just going to let you know, Mrs. Kneifel loves naps, okay? Like, it's three-day weekend. Mrs. Kneifel's planning on napping, like, all days this weekend. Anyone else? Feel free to throw it in the chat. Are you a nap person? Not a nap person. How do you feel about naps? Throw it in my chat. I'd love to know. Somewhat, yes. No, oh, Logan, you're not a napper? Oh, my gosh. I am. I love to nap. Isaac, you're not a napper either? Oh my gosh. When you guys become teenagers, I promise, in a few more years, you guys are going to love to nap. All of you. I promise. Catch me in a few years. When you're like in 7th and 8th grade, I'm going to ask you all the same question. Do you like to nap? And I promise all of you guys are going to be like, yes, please, more sleep. Mrs. Kneifel never got over the more sleep thing because I always love more sleep. A few minutes later, the whole class was making paper bag puppets. Apparently, I was the only one who didn't get the heads up about no nap thing, because for the rest of the day, everyone seemed fine, while I could barely function. I'm glad her mom remembered to bring a pacifier on the trip, because as long as Manny got one stuck in his mouth, he can sleep through just about anything. Manny lost his favorite pacifier last night, but Dad ran out to get a new one at, the near, at a store near the house that sells gag gifts. So it's a silly pacifier instead of... Uh, you know, regular old pacifier. I guess it looked a little strange, but it works as well as a regular one. Manny had been sleeping peacefully for about an hour today when we stopped at a toll booth. Dad rolled down his window to get a ticket, and the guy at the booth had such a loud voice, he sounded like he was speaking through a megaphone. Hope y'all are having an awesome day! Manny started to fuss, but his facet and his pacifier came halfway out of his mouth, but luckily... Roderick reacted quickly and Manny fell back asleep. I think mom was a little frustrated that Manny was napping in the first place. She had marked a bunch of places on her map where she wanted us to stop and get off for sightseeing, but now we had to keep driving. The problem I had with Manny's naps was that I really needed to get out of the car and stretch, but I couldn't. I tried to make myself comfortable with all the stuff piled around me. It was impossible. Luckily, my backpack was an arm's reach behind my seat because I had some books and other things I'd brought to entertain myself. Mom's always trying to get me to read stuff that's enriching, but when it comes to books, I know what I like. And ever since elementary school, my favorite books have been the ones in the Underpants Bandit series. The Underpants Bandits books are about these two kids named Bryce and Brody who go back in time and steal underwear from famous people so they could put the underwear, the underpants in a museum. I know it sounds kind of ridiculous, but their books are actually pretty funny. And just as Vin, and just as Van Gogh returned to his masterpiece, Bryce snatched the painter's favorite pair of boxers, which, thank goodness, were clean. Definitely sounds like a silly book to me. The books are super popular with boys at my school, but all the teachers hate them because of their rude humor. That just means, like, humor, but it's kind of, like, a little bit silly. Like, it's talking about underpants, not necessarily things you talk about all the time. Whenever a book report was due in fifth grade, all the boys in my class did theirs on one of the Underpants Bandits books, and that made my teacher, Mrs. Terry, hate them even more. Our class had a project where we had to write a letter to our favorite author, and, of course, all the boys chose Mike Davies. But Mrs. Terry said we had to pick someone else so i grabbed a random book from the library and wrote my letter to an author i've never heard of before march 30th dear nathaniel my teachers made this write to an author so i picked you i have not read any of your books no offense here are my questions for you what is your favorite color what's your favorite animal what's your favorite flavor of ice cream what's your favorite superhero movie i would appreciate it if you could answer me soon because i'm getting graded on this sincerely greg hefley i don't think that's a very polite way to ask someone to answer your questions if he's never even read one of the books not very polite. I probably should have checked the year on the book was written before I wrote my letter. May 20th. Dear Mr. Hefley, I regret to inform you that the author to whom you've written, Mr. Hawthorne, passed away more than a century ago. As such, he will not be able to answer your questions. With regrets, Catherine Welker, publisher. Most parents don't like Underpants Bandits books either. All right, we are just about out of time, so I'm going to stop there on page 50. That's a good stopping place, and we will resume on Monday. I will post this in um, on Reading RTI in case you missed, like, the beginning or something happened, so it'll be there. I hope you guys have a lovely Friday. No Reading RTI homework over the weekend. 
Bye-bye. What's up?